Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to uh, kind of our kickoff for the 21-22 uh, school year LTC webinar series. Uh, my name is Brian Bates. I'm the Director of Professional Learning for the Learning Technology Center of Illinois. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Just a couple quick things before we get started and, and to allow other people to join. Uh, first, we are recording the webinar. Uh, we've changed it up a little bit. Before, you used to be able to go back to our uh, webinar page and uh, access the recording there. We're going to change it up a little bit to make it easier. Uh, a lot of you requested in the evaluations last year uh, for an easier way to access those recordings, and so we will be hosting them on YouTube. Uh, the only difference with that is it'll take us a day or two to get those uh, downloaded and then re-uploaded onto YouTube. So not as quick of a turnaround time, but it'll be a lot easier for you to access and share out with people. So uh, if you're not following the LTC on YouTube, please go search for us and follow our channel. Uh, also, if you are interested in receiving professional development credit for attending today's session, which is an hour, you'll receive an email uh, tomorrow at the email you used to register for this event with the evaluation and you'll receive uh, credit for attending the live event. Um, we're gonna go ahead and get started now. Uh, I'm excited to have our uh, recurring guests. It seems like uh, once or twice a year, we have uh, the great people over at EverFi joining us to share uh, what kind of awesome resources they have available for schools and uh, teachers. So without further ado, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing my screen and I'm going to let the uh, team at EverFi introduce themselves and get started. Hi, everyone. My name is Rachel Henry. I might have had the opportunity to work with you in the past. If not, um, welcome, glad you're here. And if uh, this is your, um, or your returner EverFi user, awesome, welcome back. We have a um, bell ringer for you all. Would love to hear who we have here in the room virtually. Um, in the chat, if you wouldn't mind, uh, would love to hear what is your role um, and what school or district do you work in? And then also what is your biggest challenge or concern since starting this new school year? Um, it's hard to believe, but we're already in the third year of COVID. Um, and I was just talking to an administrator an Illinois administrator earlier today um, and talking about you know what those new challenges are this year. So we'd love to hear again in the chat um, what those are for you um, and we can share those. So it looks like we already had um, yeah Jared yeah from Quincy and St. James awesome seventh and eighth grade. Brittany mentioned uh, motivation as being a key key word there absolutely. Jerry Ann, a third grade teacher, Hiawatha, welcome. Michelle is a social worker. Want... Hi, Chris. <laughs> Good to have you virtually. I know Chris, sixth grade, absolutely. Well, as you, again, as, you're, as everyone's coming in, if you don't, wouldn't mind the chat, just to get a sense of who do we have on the call. Um, love to hear kind of the different grade levels you support, um, your role, and also again, what are those big challenges or concerns just coming up here initially? I know it depends on what school district you're in, but I think some might have already been in school for a month, it's hard to believe, time flies, but really appreciate that. So as y'all are typing that in the chat, um, we are really excited today to uh, just bring you all up to speed on the um, fantastic new resources that EverFi has, is launching this fall. Um, we're actually gonna do a quick recap of what we launched last year because it was a lot. Um, and then we'll talk about uh, what we're launching this year. Um, and then if you've never gotten started with EverFi before, maybe this is your first time, you're gonna actually get access as well today. Um, so just know we'll be doing that demo at the end. Um, we do have uh, several uh, new folks too to the EverFi team, which we're excited to introduce you all to. Um, so as y'all are typing in the chat, just wanted to um, highlight our, your, our newest EverFi team here supporting you in Illinois. So actually I'll do that and I'll come back to the agenda. So your, new, your EverFi team here this year is myself, um, Heather Miller, uh, Michelle Hugate, Jonathan Barnes, and um, she couldn't be on the call, but Megan Moran 
you're going to hear from one of us or multiple of us over the course of this year. Um, we're your dedicated team that is here to make sure that EverFi is not just another thing on your plate, but something that creates immense value for you and your students and creates time back in your day from having to grade and having to plan. So again, you will be hearing from one of us. Um, but as uh, we're going back to the agenda, we do want to make sure for anyone who is new or just needs that refresh, refresh on EverFi that we're guiding you through um, who we are just at our core. Um, and then I'll be handing it over to Michelle to tell you again what's coming up for this year um, in terms of our new uh, releases and actually new platform updates as well. And then our colleague Heather will be taking you through the teacher dashboard. Um, so again, just so glad that you are all here. So just jumping in as well as for your EverFi refresher, as a reminder, we are your partners in whole child learning. Um, so what that means is that we offer um, digital resources that are all around critical skills education. So things that you know sometimes students won't necessarily encounter like in their math or English class, um, but things, the skills that they need to be successful in their careers and in life. Um, so ultimately, we aim to educate the whole child um, and really, um, again, uh, educating students on those critical skills such as you know, how to communicate effectively within a team, how to file your taxes, how to fill out a FAFSA form, um, and even um, those really important skills of like how to calm down when you're feeling upset. So those are the type of programs that we offer. Um, and what's the coolest thing is that we bring um, all of these uh, resources to you at no cost, um, thanks in part to our local um, sponsors there in the state of Illinois, um, as well as our national sponsors. Um, and again, you will all be getting access to this at the end, um, access to the resource at the end of this presentation. Um, and so just diving into what more um, is covered by that sponsorship. So the curriculum, like I said, fully funded, that includes um, all the student licenses that you would need. Um, those are unlimited. Uh, includes uh, folks like all that you see um, on the, all your EverFi team members here to make sure, again, it's a smooth process of you getting started with EverFi, but then also getting that continual support that you may need around curriculum questions and also tech questions throughout the year. Um, and then it also includes some really cool opportunities with our sponsors, again, both in Illinois and nationally around um, scholarship opportunities, around special events. So one of the benefits of having an EverFi account is that you um, learn about those uh, uh, opportunities as they come up throughout the school year. And since we're sort of here at the beginning of uh, the school year, I always like to recap where we landed at the end of last school year. And so across the state of Illinois, we had almost 99,000 students take one or more of the EverFi resources, um, which is really exciting. And that included um, over 900 schools participating um, and almost 1,800 teachers implementing. And then just again to highlight some of our regional and national uh, partners, those uh, you can see some of their logos listed here Some just wonderful folks that we work with who really want to ensure again that every district and every student has access to these resources. So when um, before I show you kind of the full course catalog, I did want to highlight what we call our ever five problem set. Um, and what this does, in addition to obviously showing the stats on the screen, is it helps kind of um, show why EverFi exists in the first place. Yes, we develop programs around critical skills education, but this is our why behind why we do that. Um, so not to read everything, this is a very text heavy slide, but just to highlight for you, for example, Oh, on the far left, it says four in 10 US consumers reported that they had trouble paying at least one bill or expense in the past year. And then if you look in the middle, it says worldwide, one in four people will experience a mental health issue in any given year. So um, again, as you're reading these statistics, these are things that we know, you know, both across the US and the, and the globe are uh, systemic issues that we're hoping to help us, you know, re, you know support and resolve um, with our resources and just be another tool in the toolbox for you to use that creates time and value for your students. 
And lastly, the um, up to date um, course catalog. There's a lot going on on this slide. It always continues to get bigger and bigger every year. And like I, some, I said, my um, colleague Michelle will be diving into all of those updates here in a second. But just one of the ways that you can read this chart is by starting in the top row um, and looking at the different topic areas that we offer um, resources in. So financial education being in the top left, of course, that's our bread and butter. That's what EverFi is known for. We started in high school financial literacy over 10 years ago, um, but then really expanded as we kept our ear to the ground, listening to what the needs of our schools and teachers were so that we expanded from just not just high school all the way to elementary um, financial education and then expanded that into topic areas like STEM and career readiness, social emotional learning, health and wellness, early academic readiness, and diversity, equity, and inclusion. And so this is what we have released now. Um, but then, of course, Michelle will get to share what the newer releases will be this fall. It's always, it's ever evolving as this session is called and ever growing. And we're just so glad you're here to learn more about it. So with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and pass this off to my colleague, Michelle, to, to tell you what's new for 21-22. Great, thank you so much, Rachel. Um, I'm really excited to be here with you all today. Um, my name is Michelle Fugate. I'm actually a regional implementation lead. I'm located out in Columbus, Ohio, but supporting schools uh, here in Illinois. Um, some of you might have heard from my colleague, Stephanie James. She is out on maternity leave with her newest addition to the family. So I will be supporting her area um, for the next few months um, until she returns. And I'm really excited to share with you what's new. So first, we're going to talk about what was new this last school year. So the school year right before this one, um, we had a lot of updates. Some of you that are returners might be familiar with this, but we wanted to make sure that we could really wrap everything into one just to get everyone up to speed. Um, so last school year, we had um, our course released with the Truth Initiative called Vaping Know the Truth. This has been one of our most popular editions and definitely one of our most highly requested editions. Um, I know every time I talk about this course in person, I see head nods, people saying, yep, this is something that's really an issue in our school. We're really happy to have something like this. So um, yeah, thank you so much. We have a comment in the chat talking about eighth graders working on the vaping program. Um, this has been something that's been really beneficial, not only for health and wellness teachers, but also for administrators as well, um, really seeing that in those middle school and high school age ranges. Um, we've had our sustainability foundations course. Um, this is working on that middle school age range, talking about plants, animals in our world, money moves, which is really an expansion on the lesson of our high school financial literacy course, talking about modern banking and identity protection. So thinking about all of those apps that you use on your phone when you're transferring money, receiving money, checking your bank account, um, how to be safe with all that information online. And then Pathways, our financing higher education course. This was also um, really kind of a direct pullout from our uh, high school financial literacy course as well. So talking all about financing higher education. Um, what's really special about this course is I know we hear from a lot of teachers saying, well, maybe not all of my kids are college bound. Maybe they're thinking about other things. This can be a course for them as well. So this really helps students evaluate the ROI on higher education and whether or not this is something that's gonna be beneficial to them based on what their goals are for the um, next few years of their life. And then we'll move on to our next slide, um, which is what's new this year. So we had a lot of new things happening last year and even more things happening this year that we're really excited to share with you. So we'll go ahead and dive into those now. First is our Data Science Foundations course. Uh, we were actually just talking about this with Brian before you all hopped on. Um, and this is kind of like a boot camp talking to students about the fundamentals of data science. Um, what's really cool about this course is a lot of different areas. We see CTE teachers really interested in this, teachers that are teaching some type of computer science, and even just straight math and science as well. Um, so this is something that's really talking about different ways to use data, even what careers might be um, stemming from that. And this is typically for like our high school age range as well. This data science exploration course is kind of an expansion on this, talking about uh, data science in a more specific um, environment. So talking about how this relates to the banking industry and banking fraud, and really kind of having that careers component to it as well, learning about the ways that different careers might use data science. 
Um, this is a bit more bite-sized than the last course, so a really easy add-on to either the other data science exploration course or to any other careers courses or data science um, education that you have in your classroom. Next up is our healthcare literacy course. Um, this is something that we always joke about at EverFi that we know we need to take as adults. Um, this is something that really seems to be increasingly complicated every year, no matter how long you've been dealing with insurance and things like that. So this is a way that we can really get students involved in this conversation early, even though this might not be something that they see as you know coming up in their future um, very soon. But this will be something that not only is talking about the healthcare insurance market and how to navigate that, but also how to navigate making decisions to promote your own health and well being. So, how to seek care, what kind of care you might need, and then how to pay for that. So, my favorite part about this course is really harping on that self advocacy piece and really teaching students to be that advocate for themselves, not only when it comes to their financial wellness, but their health and wellness as well. And then within our EverFi financial literacy course, we do have a new interactive TurboTax simulation. So those of you that are familiar with our courses do know that we really like to keep our courses very interactive, but this is going to be one of the most interactive real world connection pieces of any of our courses. So they actually get to go through a tax simulation um, through Intuit TurboTax and really learning what this would look like were they to be doing their own taxes. So this is something that really has that hands on experience for students. So when they're faced with this in the real world, whether that's their high school job that they have or maybe a job that they have right after they graduate, they're going to be able to have already been exposed to something like this. So another really great expansion that should be coming um, this November. And then some additional courses launching this fall. We told you all we have a lot coming down the pipeline. Um, so you'll see our savings and retirement course again, kind of in that financial literacy and economics um, subject matter block, um, again, for high school students as well. So talking about that next step, not only just personal financial literacy in real time, but what that can look like for building your own financial future down the road. We have Compassion Project Part 2. Um, so for those of you that are familiar with our original Compassion Project, that is for our youngest kiddos, so thinking more like second and third grade. This is going to be kind of a sister course um, that's really for that later elementary age range. So um, this will be teaching students the basics of empathy, compassion, relationship building, and conflict resolution. We'll be getting some updates to the Word Force course, which is all about early literacy. Those are for our youngest learners. We do have a lot of teachers, um, especially with everything that's been going on the last few years, using this with our later elementary as well as a way to kind of remediate and sharpen those skills. So Lots of great updates coming to that course. Uh, Mental Wellness Basics, another course that's being updated. So this is for our not only middle school, but also high school as well, teaching students all about healthy coping strategies, how to advocate for themselves, um, really removing that stigma around uh, mental wellness. So bringing some really great updates to that course. The Endeavor Lessons, so we have our Endeavor STEM Careers course. There's going to be a new lesson all about um, transportation. This should be out now. So for those of you who are familiar with our Ever, uh, Endeavor course, feel free to log into this and explore already. Um, this is really talking about not only STEM careers and how to explore that field, but also introducing students to careers that they might not have thought were STEM careers already, and really being able to expose themselves to all of these different fields that they can get into and what they need to do now in order to prepare themselves to get there. And then last, we'll be having some uh, new videos with our Future Smart, our middle school financial literacy course. These will be videos that teachers can use outside of the program to be able to start class discussion, um, create offline lessons with, um, or really introduce students to the course before they even get into it. And then on that topic of Future Smart, um, for those of you who aren't familiar, this is our middle school financial literacy course. Typically a best fit for grades six through eight. We're usually seeing this in some type of a social studies class or if your school has um, a financial literacy or business elective. Um, we've had a lot, uh, our great partnership with Mass Mutual over the last few years, and we've been developing a lot more resources, not only for teachers to use with their students, but also for teachers themselves. So we have an entire adult financial education um, landing page here 
that will be tailored to educators. Um, so that way you all can not only have your students have access to these great resources, but you can also have access to an adult tailored resource as well. Um, there will be educator professional development. So very similar to what we're doing here today, um, other professional development based on those things. And then family and caregiver financial education as well. So really just being a big resource hub through Mass Mutual for extending financial education beyond just the classroom. And then next, I'm going to pass it over um, to Heather here in just a moment um, to talk more about our um, getting started with EverFi. Before we do that, for those of you who are familiar with our programs, you will see some teacher dashboard updates. Um, you'll see some improvements on creating your class, getting things set up, adding courses to your class sections, and even through the registration process. So going to pass it over to um, our regional director, Heather Miller, who will be able to show you all that. Awesome. Thanks, Michelle and Rachel for taking lead on this. I'm super excited today to um, make things happen for you when it comes to getting started with EverFi. Um, Rachel, if you want to go ahead and go, if we can, to our dashboard, we're actually going to go ahead and go straight into, yep, there we go, what our dashboard actually looks like. And I'm not sure if my camera is on or not, but it's, I don't think it's working. Is I it can working? Your face yeah, your camera. Oh, okay, we perfect. Perfect. Awesome. Not that you all need to see my face, but just make sure. Um, okay, so our dashboard, I think, is very user-friendly. So I always like to start off with the dark blue tab at the very, very top. So from here, you can do a lot of different things. You can go to our homepage, which is going to be all of your resources that are currently on your dashboard. By hitting the catalog button or the explore catalog right underneath it, um, you are able to see all of the different EverFi resources that we have available. Um, Rachel, if you want to, yep, perfect. Thanks so much. Um, from here, you can demo each course. You can find out what those ages or the grade level currently are that we suggest. And then um, you can actually create your classes directly from this uh, platform now, um, which used to be a little different. So pay attention to that because it is just a little different with our new platform. Um, by going to your support tab, which is um, the next tab over, we will actually show you a couple different things here. So one, your implementation specialist is always going to be listed right there for you. So you're gonna know who your main contact is at EverFi, no matter um, what time of year it is. The other thing that I really like to point out at the very top is those scholarship opportunities. So this is great because you can literally click that link and it will take you to a site that will list out all of the different resources and sponsorships and scholarships that are available to your students. If they're using any type of EverFi resource, they're eligible for one of our two blog contests plus additional ones from Mass Mutual and Fifth Third. So definitely um, spend some time here looking through this as um, there's nothing better from a parent perspective um, to come home and have those scholarship opportunities available for your kids. The other thing I wanna kind of point out as we go through here is we have a great support center here as well. So we often have you reach out to us as your main support, but now we have a dedicated team that their job is just to make sure things are working properly for you. The best thing is, is here by this clicking in here, we have question and the answers, there's course issues, login and registration issues. You can call or um, be able to do a link here shortly um, with that as well. So pretty awesome that you can do one click and basically get some help if your school's manager is not with you. Course standards alignments is also going to be right here as well. Um, so you can actually click right in there and that will take you into all of our alignment documents by providing your state, what grade level you have uh, or are looking for, and then that subject. And then it will automatically um, tell you a lot of the different resources that are available. Outstanding. Yep, Rachel, you're right. Yep, going back all the way up to the very, very top. Um, we're going to take you back to your home page which again takes you back, back directly into what resources you currently have on your dashboard. I'm gonna now switch to the light blue 
um, tab, which is going to show you your courses. Um, you'll also see that there we have a classes button. You can actually make classes using two different like tabs. You can go here and hit create class. And this is going to pop up and ask you about five different questions. Um, so what's the name of your course? What's the start date, class size, grade level? And then like Michelle mentioned earlier, you can actually add as many courses on as you want um, by hitting that add course. Now, if you're clever enabled, which we're going to talk about here in a few minutes, this will actually be a little different for you because your drop down where your class name is will actually list out all of your sessions or your sections um, that are aligned within EverFi. Um, so Rachel, show them how, what, what happens when you hit that add course button so that they can see. Perfect, thank you. So you're able just to simply select by clicking one of those boxes and then that will automatically add that resource into your class. And then you hit that add button in the top right. And then the most important part of all of this is that create button in the top right. If you don't hit the create button, it will not make your class. Once you have hit that create button, you get a registration code. That registration code is how you give um, your students access to the resources that you have assigned. You can also click right back into um, your sections that you just created. And then the other thing that you can do to find out each class code for each individual course is you can mark that little thing, it will pop up for you. Yep, perfect, awesome. And then you can have each section if you wanted to. A lot of times if you have all of these kind of assigned and ready to go, might as well just put all of those courses on for your students. And then I wanna show you the edit button. So at any time that you're wanting to change the name of your um, class, if you're wanting to add additional resources, this is a great way for you to be able to do that by clicking edit. You can change all of that information, scroll down, and you can hit again, add courses, anything you need to change. This is the, the way you go about doing that. And then by selecting that add and save again, it will automatically save all of the changes that you just made. And then I always tell my teachers just stay away from that hide button. If you need to get rid of a, of a actual section that you created, um, let your school's manager know and we can definitely negotiate that with you and, and figure out what the best round of like getting that solved for you. Um, within our student tab, um, you want to do student or you want to do reports? That's fine. <laughs> our reports tab is going to be your grade book. So if you've never um, seen or heard of EverFi, you probably maybe don't know that we have pre and post assessments embedded within for all of our different resources. So by clicking that report button, you select the resource that you want, and then you're actually going to see all of your students auto populate. So this is a live grade book, meaning that if you have students that are entering your class, they will automatically start to show up as soon as they log in and as soon as those assessments start to come in. By clicking a few buttons, you can get some additional information. So if you will click on the view button for one of those students, you're actually gonna see pre and post data for each one of those students. It also will link out what time they took that pre-test and what time they took that post-test. And if they've taken uh, one of the tests multiple times, it will actually list that out as well. We always in our gradebook go with the highest, um, so it's kind of nice. And then if you have students that need um, some different adjustments to their scores, you can actually do that with just like Rachel just showed you all. Um, you can on the left side for the all EverFi courses or classes, you can do a drop down with that if you have multiple um, classes. So if you're just looking for one set class to be able to transfer those into your gradebook, you're able to do that. The other awesome thing about our report tab is you're able to download it as a CSV file, which is like an Excel document in order for you to actually gain access outside. And then the other thing that um, Rachel was just kind of pointing to is the certification. So this is going to tell you what students are certified in the programs and then what students are actually lacking that certification. Um, one of the things that they have to do is pass every single resource 
or every single lesson at a 70% or higher in order to be certified, which allows them to uh, basically print off that certificate and kind of move on to the next Everbright resource. But I know Michelle answered that question. So I have a student who accidentally registered twice with two different passwords, happens a lot. Um, you can hide her uh, or, or yes, hide her or the other fix is to email your um, actual school's manager and then we can sometimes go in and, and change that as well. But if you hide that student, then it will take them out of that class um, within your um, like reports and student information. If you're wanting only one course to show up for that student, I would definitely encourage you to reach out to your school's managers because um, there is something we can do in order to, to make that happen if the student is kind of getting confused on which resource uh, to, to work with it. Definitely a, a very interesting topic um, to do with students. The other button I like to just point out um, is our invited teacher button. So we're gonna focus on that also with another slide. But that invited teacher button is it's a great way for you to share Everfi's resources and earn a little bit of Amazon dollars along the way. So if your Amazon cart is anything like mine, I constantly have everything in my cart and I'm having to you know, shop later um, for those things. So by clicking this invited teacher um, and for every referral that you do, we receive, um, if they use with four students or more, you would actually receive a $15 Amazon gift card. Um, most of the time, by filling out their name, email address, where their school is, state and providence, um, you can change that personal greeting to something that sounds more like you. And then you can actually select up to five different resources that you feel like that person would benefit from. So definitely suggest being able to go in there and invite those teachers as well. And then the one thing I do want to point out is over by your name, um, this is where you can actually make changes to your profile. So if Rachel, if you'll hit that my profile, it will actually take you in um, and you can like, you're able to change your password. If something's happened, you can change your email address or anything like that. Um, and then you would click that update information as well. Perfect, awesome. Um, that kind of wraps up our dashboard training um, and feel free to kind of put any questions you may have in the chat and Michelle and Jonathan can definitely um, jump in. One of the things I'd like to mention is you'll notice we started out with just the EverFi financial literacy resource. And then when Rachel added on all of those different resources um, into her class, they now all show up there on her homepage. Um, so that is one way that those will automatically pop up. And then the other way um, that you are able to view the course as a student is you can literally click that view course within each section. And that will take you into our resource, um, like I said, as a student, and you can negotiate through all of the different lessons. As that comes up, you will notice all of our resources do talk to the students. Um, so headphones, I think, are an essential part of an EverFi um, experience. Um, so you can go through there. The teacher portal, basically, you are able to um, adjust your um, like videos and different things like that and skip through things where students are not able to do that. I noticed a Q&A is coming in and Michelle's typing <clears throat> on that and it's talking about how students sign up. Um, no worries, we have a whole slide on that because it is different based on if you're clever integrated or not. And if you're not sure if your school's clever integrated, no worries. We're about to we're about to get to the part where we're, we share which districts are in in I uh, in Illinois, I should say, um, and then uh, make sure you can get access. So that's coming up. No worries, you you didn't miss anything. But thanks, Michelle, for doing that. Yes, awesome. Um, and then also. Um, so you'll like hear us talk about schools managers, implementation specialists, and the implementation leads, um, and what those what those people are are actually the people that's on this call. So we are here to help you within um, questions you may have with Everify or implementation. Um, like if you have any issues or questions, please reach out to your people here at Everify because that is truly our job and something we really do. Um, like hope that we can really partner with you and become one of those um, essential people that you reach out to anytime you have questions or problems. 
The other thing I want to point out is our resources section. So this is going to house a lot of different information. Have some time to go through here. It's going to have all of the assessment questions, answer keys, different things like that. But my two favorite are that course outline and the curriculum guides. And the course outline is going to give you a brief little overview of what's covered in the course and like where it's covered. Um, the objectives are always going to be listed, the description. So if you're looking to teach a set specific topic, check out those curriculum guides because it's going to guide you in the right direction. Our curriculum guides are actually going to be something that's a little bit bulkier. So it's going to go into like recommended levels, um, what the standards alignments are. It's going to dive into like every single lesson and how it's covered. And the other thing that I love to show, and if you'll continue to kind of scroll down, Rachel, um, it talks about every activity topic, the activity description, but most important, what your students are gonna be able to do once they get through this experience and this lesson with Ever5. So it lists everything out for you, which hopefully you're able to just pick and take right into your lessons and your lesson planning, or even potentially some documents that you have to give to your administrators. And I also too wanted to quickly ch chime into, and I don't know, I know we have some um, folks that have used EverFi in the past on this call. Um, there's so many different ways you can implement this, uh, EverFi and infinite amount of ways, quite frankly. Um, but what I love about like EverFi financial literacy, for example, is that you could look at this course structure, for example, and maybe you say, you know what, I really want to actually work on the insurance topic. Like that's the, the topic that I think uh, there might be some gaps in my curriculum. You could just pull that one lesson out and have students go through that one. Or if you have time for students to go through all of them, you could have them do that. Or you could even have student choice where they could, students, you say, hey, students just pick three topics that you're most interested in. And then that again, motivates students to feel like they have, you know, that, that voice um, and then what they're learning. And so Again, there's so many ways. I'm learning cool ways all the time that you are all use, how y'all use this, the folks that have already used it. Um, and feel free to chime in too in the chat if you have like a really great way that you use EverFi. Um, we always can learn from um, each other on that. Yeah, definitely. And I was getting ready to say, um, one of the most important things you could probably do is share with your implementation leader, implementation specialist, how you're using the program. Because that helps us be able to know like how we should also talk with our teachers and educators. You could have one of the most interesting ways to use this program. And if you don't share it, then we don't know. And so we're not able to share that with other educators. So always reach out and even just letting them know like, hey, we're using this as a supplement in our STEM financial literacy program. Um, like that's awesome. And, and being able to, again, like talk with you and seeing what that implementation is like. One of the other things we love to do is also include our educators in different conferences and presentations that we do. Um, so always reach out and let us know kind of um, what's happening in your school, what conferences you guys are going to, and more importantly, like how EverFi is really being used in your classroom. Outstanding. Um, yep, perfect. And um, those lessons and activities are also going to be listed here. So these are going to be non-digital lessons that align with all of the digital lessons that you have. What I love about this is everything is completely done for you, including worksheets, um, at materials that you need, objectives. Literally, you could print this off and have a lesson within two seconds of doing this. So there's always going to be different sections that are included, but my love for our lesson plans is definitely the activity and then the discussion that takes place. Because I really truly feel like that's where the students are really going to take um, the knowledge that they learn from not only the digital component, but also this lesson and be able to really apply it to their real life. Um, Awesome. There was a, uh, and I know uh, uh, Jonathan's chatting in here too, but there's a question about how to get to the curriculum guide um, in the teacher center. Um, so just to retrace our steps, um, we're here on the homepage, which will default when you first log in, no matter if you're clever um, integrated or not clever integrated. Um, and then down here, it's just the resources button. But what's cool is that we just looked at the resources for one course. I mean, if you use marketplaces, venture and future smart this is hours and hours and hours of online and offline curriculum 
um, that you can mix and match. I just love, as a former educator, I just love the flexibility of these resources. I think that's really what's so helpful. Um, but yeah, and again, this is just four courses. We're not even touching on the ones that Michelle went over that are new and, and what's coming out and, su and such. So definitely as you're looking through this and as Heather mentioned, make sure you're uh, referring your colleagues who could benefit from this, in this instructional resources as well. Yes, definitely. And especially ones that you know you're not gonna use in your classroom. Like what else could be better? Um, letting another educator know about a, a resource that's gonna be offered at no cost and a $15 Amazon card if they end up using it. So pretty awesome and pretty sweet. Perfect. Um, with that, let's go back to the presentation and let's walk you through how to get access to EverFi. Um, so we have two different ways that we're actually going to kind of walk you through. Several districts in this state are actually what we call clever and able. So we are um, single sign on. It's going to be amazing for you. Uh, it's a very, very easy process. So this is our alphabetical order of all of the schools here in the state that are clever synced with us. And we're going to take you guys through your journey of finding EverFi very quickly. And then for everyone that's not listed here, just hold tight and we're going to actually walk you through our um, registration process as well. So find your school if it's listed here. If it's not, just hold tight. And Rachel, let's share how we get them started. Mm -hmm. with there we go. And so you will log into your district portal and then you wanna click on that Clever app that is currently located within the district portal. Then within Clever, you're gonna search for the EverFi application. So it is white with gray letters um, and our little F has the little um, top little part. Once you select that, you've entered EverFi. That's how quick and easy your registration is within Clever and within EverFi. Once you get in there, you can go into that catalog and, and add those resources like we just showed you. And then- so yeah, um, Heather, could I put in that landing page for both uh, Clever and non-Clever, just that central link, um, everfi.com backslash create yeah. for folks to get there if they don't already. So if you don't already know where your Clever link is, like maybe you're not quite sure where that's located, it's not maybe bookmarked for you yet. If you just, and this is actually the link everyone will go to because we're going to talk about non-Clever in a second. You can just click on that. Um, and it's going to say, you know, which one describes you, are you a student, are you a teacher, y'all can click teacher, but at least you know where your students are going to go when they register, but if you click teacher, if you did see, again, your school district listed, you'll scroll to the bottom where it says login with Clever. Um, so that's just wanted to highlight that for everyone. Yes, definitely. then if you have any problems and you're clever integrated, please definitely let us know in the chat because we can definitely um, help you along the way with that as well. For those that are not clever enabled, um, again, you're gonna go to uh, exactly where Rachel had put in there and we're gonna talk to you about how to register using this way. So you can pretty much see that you um, have two options here. Um, you either register as a student or register as a teacher. Um, sometimes we do have students register as teachers, and if that does occur within your classroom, please just reach out to your school's or your implementation uh, leader specialist, and we can definitely take care of that. And then, Rachel, I, of course, added a lot of animation, so you can click one more time, and my little arrow will pop up saying that you are a teacher. Once you select that, um, then you're going to, um, to go into a different screen and go ahead and click um, and then that will take you into doing your country, state, and school name or zip code. That will be able to do a drop down for you. And then once you get there, um, I would just go ahead and list out my school name because chances are it should come up with about three to four letters in there. And then you're going to hit that next button. Once you do that, um, it's going to take you into our kind of our, our document of where you're going to want to fill out. And of course, Rachel, I have lots of um, little <laughs> arrows to direct them. So our first name, um, a last name, your grade. So if you teach multiple grades, you are able to list those out. And then those topics are going to be some of the areas that you cover. 
within your classroom. So if you're looking for STEM, financial education, health and wellness, whatever and how many topics that you can choose, um, you can kind of divvy that up and, and decide. But remember, you do get access to every single one of those ever five resources. Um, so don't worry if you get in there and one does not show up. Um, we're going to ask you to enter your school email address and then create your password. Um, and then you also have to confirm that so we can make sure that that password looks good. And then you'll hit agree to terms and services and hit create account. And that's going to take you into your EverFi dashboard. Now I'm going to give you just a few moments um, to kind of do that and ask questions um, to our EverFi gurus that are in the chat. Hopefully you all got all of your accounts set up. If any questions, definitely um, let us know in the chat. Yeah, and I was just gonna also mention too, back on the implement, implementing piece too, as you are getting access, um, there was several folks at the beginning kind of talking about like what their um, challenges are for this year and the idea of getting everyone on the same page of thinking about the gaps in learning, thinking about how do I manage my in-person learners, my remote learners, students who are quarantined know that these resources can be used in any of those situations. So maybe you're already brainstorming this, but do know we have any modality of learning works with EverFi. The only thing that students have to have is a device and an internet connection. So just, again, to clarify that for, for anyone who has questions um, around that, but please let us know too in the chat if you have any problems getting logged in. Or too, I mean, we're, we've talked about Clever, maybe your district uses Clever, um, but you don't actually access EverFi through Clever, um, and you want to. If that's the case, definitely reach out to one of, to your support, um, your implementation specialist. Again, you can go to your support um, button uh, that's on your teacher dashboard and email us, and we can get that conversation already started with your IT director, letting them know there's interest and seeing if they want to move forward. Every single teacher I've ever had who went from using everfi.net to clever loved it their number one response was i never have to reset another student password ever again i'm so <laughs> excited um so again if clever is available uh, to your uh, from your district uh, let us know we can get that set up even though school has already started we can make that integration happen very very easy definitely and i love it because you're able to push everything out with a click of a button to your students they don't have another username they don't have another password that they have to remember um, so very easy as an educator to use that within the clever um so we're going to go ahead and move on to how to get your students um, on the platform so we walked through how to create that class so when you create that class in the classes tab you're gonna be able to share those codes with your students um, and have them self-register. Chances are you're also gonna receive a couple emails from your implementation specialist um, to help guide you along that way. We have documents um, and like we call them quick start guides for students that we're able to send you in order to make that process a little bit easier and PowerPoints as well. Um, when you receive this presentation, um, there are actually clickable links uh, within this page, especially on how to create your classes, your student registration instructions. Um, you can literally click there and there are videos ready and waiting for you. The second option is to upload your student rosters. Um, ah, yes, that's SOPA agreement, Rachel. There you go. Our uh, Rachel Henry is our SOPA um, guru here at EverFi. So do you want to jump in, Rachel? And yeah, talk? yeah, cause definitely. Because I know there was another Q&A um, that Michelle caught that I wanted to make sure we talked about. So um, we, we totally are keeping track of what's happening at the legislative level in the state of Illinois around um, kind of data privacy, which um, is something that as an organization, we take very seriously um, and are uh, working to get those logged um, as we receive them. Um, so we do have those coming in daily uh, from districts having signed them. Um, so um, if you don't, if your district doesn't have a SOPA agreement in place with us, we want to work as quickly as possible to make that happen so that we are in compliance. Um, so what that could look like, and I'm just going to go ahead and put my email in the chat so you have it, um, is connecting me 
with your IT director or whoever um, is responsible for SOPA in your district, um, feel free to send them my email or maybe you could e feel free even if you know who it is, you can introduce us via email and we can um, work on what that, there are a variety of like options of how we can get that signed. But I definitely want this to not be something that limits you um, in order you know, to get access um, to the EverFi resources. So shoot me an email um, with their contact information or um, introduce us. Um, and we are also uh, proactively reaching out to districts. It's just sometimes we're not finding the, the right person who works on that. And we, we understand that, that it's usually a department or a specific person. So um, if you have any other uh, questions, though, please let me um, know either in the chat or again, send me an email. Yes, awesome. Yeah, Rachel is definitely taking the lead here for EverFi in our SOPA agreements and she knows everything about it. So very, very, um, appreciative of Rachel's help and all of the work she's done in order to get all of our districts in the state um, ready to go. So definitely uh, introduce Rachel and she'll take it from there. It'll be very little work. And sometimes it also just takes one educator to kind of reach out to that one person at the district level to let them know that there is interest in using EverFi and we can very quickly get that SOPA agreement signed and get you on the way to using EverFi. Awesome. So I'm going to jump back into um, the different student registrations with a little bit of time that we have left. Um, the other registration you can do is actually to upload your student rosters. Um, I only really recommend this for educators that are down in that lower level, like K through maybe two, to be honest with you. Um, but we do have that available um, through our um, student tab. Um, so what you do is actually create your class and then you would download uh, what we call a CSV file. And then you would input all of the usernames and passwords that you want your students to use. And then you would share that information with those students. Um, a pro tip here, students' usernames can no longer be email addresses. Um, so if you've ever used EverFi in the past and have had your students register with email addresses, they are no longer able to do that. Um, we're trying to make sure that we are really in compliance with every single law that's out there in all of our different states and countries that we work in. Um, so by simply changing that format to a, a hyphen or a dash um, can take care of that. So first name, hyphen, last name, hyphen, school name, um, or they can actually use their email address, but where there is the at sign or period, just put a hyphen there and they're able to do that. The third and by far the most easiest way to get your students on EverFi is to have that single sign on via Clever. Um, you literally create your class, assign it to that section, and then the next time your students um, go to EverFi, it's waiting for them. Um, one of the biggest things I will say with Clever Integrated Teachers is they assign the section and then they go to their student tab and there's no students listed. This is our way of basically being able to let you know what students actually might be having a difficult time getting onto EverFi or getting onto the platform. So your students will not show up until they are actively in the program. Um, so again, that's just one way that we are able to kind of set that up that you can just double, double check um, that all students are in the platform and have no issues. Outstanding. Um, doesn't look like we have any questions about that. So we're going to just take a couple minutes. I know we're kind of short on time, but we wanted to give you a little bit of information um, just to kind of go through there, sign in, set up your classes, um, and then like put in the chat, like, was there something that kind of piqued your interest and how do you plan on using these resources or any strategies we discussed that you plan to implement within your um, actual classroom? Would love to definitely hear that or any other questions you may have. I know we're really good at presenting, so there were, you may have no questions whatsoever, um, but the benefit of this is uh, once we send out the email afterwards that has the recording on here, on the first page, it will actually have a link that you can click and you will be able to set up a meeting with us as well so we can have an individual conversation with you about implementation, what classes or courses you teach, and maybe what some of the EverFi uh, resources are that we're able to, you know, encourage you or, or help you use within your classroom. Uh, yes, um, <laughs> yes, it is. Um, also, probably you have a username that may, is that 
Is it asking you to do your username or is it asking you to do your password? It may be asking you to reset your password if um, the password is changed. Yes, review of materials presented in class. I love it. I would try to um, change your, uh, it might just be your username that needs to be adjusted. Um, you might try to maybe log in um, or change your login um, outside of your email address and that might take care of it. Kate, so I was a business personal finance teacher. So um, love that you're using it in financial literacy class. I think we have so many resources um, that fit perfectly within that class. I could name about six or seven right in our. Um, Rachel, do you think what would be the best? It might be best for her to maybe stay on a little bit after, maybe. Yes. Um, yeah, um, Jean, if it's not working for you um, to like, I would al almost like maybe start over too, maybe go back to um, everfi.net and try to log in again. Um, and if it's not working, um, I'm, I'm also going to email you. I'll email you directly and we'll, we'll make sure that you can get logged in. I apologize for the, for the hiccup here. Um, yeah, no, no problem. And that's exactly what we would encourage you to do anytime. If like something is not working, <laughs> for example, and you're like, okay, I'm trying to start this class in five minutes and I need my registration codes or something like that. Always, that's why we give you our phone numbers as well. So you can pick up the phone and call us. We're always here. Um, but yeah. Uh, be on the lookout for that email for me. Awesome. And then Rachel, let's go to that last. I think we have maybe one more slide. Um, yep, that invited teacher. So again, that's worth fifteen dollars. Um, every teacher that you refer that uses with four or more students, um, you'll be eligible for that Amazon gift card that's sent automatically. And then next steps. Um, that's kind of like where we like to always kind of end it. Um, so you can definitely visit FFI.com backslash K12, select new for 2021 from the banner menu, and you're going to learn a lot more about what's coming. Um, but you'll also, as soon as you get access to EverFi, one of the big things you will definitely see is we're going to email you with the different things that are coming out. Um, so always pay attention to your emails and definitely log into your account, um, see the new courses and dashboard updates that are currently available. And then most, I think, important for us is that you share on social media. What are you excited about? How are you going to use? And don't forget to tag at everfi 12 or your local implementation skills manager um, in order to um, let us know again. Yeah, so Michelle, yeah, answered it perfectly. Our, our verticals are constantly growing. Um, I definitely think that um, if I was you, I'd look into keys a little bit um, as well, because there may be some things that you can definitely pull out of that. So keys to your future might be able to help you a little bit as well. I'm trying to answer questions as well. This is your time to basically like ask us any questions you have. Um, you've got, I think, four experts from EverFi on the line uh, with lots of years of experience on implementation and helping our teachers. But we truly you know, appreciate the time that you shared with us. Um, we'll stay on for just a little bit to answer any questions, but please reach out to us and let us know how we can really make a difference in your classroom and um, how we can partner with you and your school district this year. Well, Rachel, Jonathan, Heather, Michelle, all of you, thank you so much for joining us again. Like I said at the very beginning, uh, we always love having EverFi as part of our webinars because uh, you guys have great stuff. And not just do you, have, do you have great resources and materials, you also are good people. Uh, when they say reach out to them, they will get back to you. I can promise you they are very good at uh, supporting you uh, just from past experience. And they're wonderful at, with supporting teachers as they uh, either get started with, their, with, the, with EverFi or if they're current users and are uh, just trying some new stuff out. So I do not hesitate to reach out to them. Um, if you have any questions, go ahead and feel free to throw them in the chat here uh, as we kind of wrap up. I do want to remind you uh, that we will have the recording available. Uh, it's not quite as quick a turnaround as last year since I said we'll be hosting it on 
uh, YouTube, but I would anticipate being able to, to share that with uh, the team at EverFi to send out to you in their email uh, within probably, I'd say, 48 hours. So we'll have that to you so you guys can uh, get that sent out to you. So um, any other last minute questions here in the chat or in the Q&A? All right, awesome. Well, thank you again uh, to the participants for joining today. Rachel, Michelle, Jonathan, and Heather, again, thank you so much for joining and sharing everything you guys have going on over at EverFi. Uh, and I look forward to the next time we get together and there's 10 more things that we can share and talk about. So uh, until next time, thank you all so much for joining us today. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.